But I'm telling you, this enemy is real. And I'm not frightening you, but you got to understand what you're dealing with. That one of his assignments is to resist you and is to oppose you and make sure that you never fulfill your assignment on earth. And that is what he did to Jesus. He came after him until the man left his head. Satan was on his case. And he never stopped praying till he left the earth. He never stopped because he understood that it is only in the place of prayer that we can override the enemy and superimpose God's counsel and enforce the will of God over the enemy. Jesus has just gotten off of a very turbulent cruise and reached his destination and stepped out on dry land in a place that is called Gadarenes. And uh, Gadara is part of 10 provinces that were so similarly suited that Jesus purposefully went into them to effect change. The moment he steps off the boat, a wild, hairy, gnarled, grotesque figure comes running toward him. Gets close to Jesus and falls down at his feet and begins to worship him. He is worshiping at the feet of Jesus. And then the next thing he says, he says to us, don't, to Jesus, don't torment me. I adjure you. I adjure you. Don't, don't, don't torment me. Don't, don't attack me. And, and imagine being a disciple and you're watching this happen. And, and the guy is doing the right thing. He's worshiping. But there's something wrong with the worship. And as he worships Jesus, a conversation goes on between them on a different dimension from what the disciples could see. For example, he calls Jesus Son of God. And at that time, most of his disciples did not even. Even know. Who they were with. They weren't there at the virgin birth. And they were not there in the Jordan River. And they had seen him as a teacher and a rabbi and a master. But this guy runs over and falls down, starts worshiping and calls him the son of God. And Jesus begins to minister, well, not really minister. He, he begins to negotiate, if you please. In his grace, he negotiates with these spirits who say, if we must leave the man don't make us leave the territory and Jesus cast the demons who are called legion out of the man into a herd of swine and the swine run down the hill into the lake and drown. And all the herdsmen are shocked because they've never seen anything like this before. Run to the city to tell them what happened. And the city comes out to see Jesus. 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 The city comes out to see Jesus because of a demon. The city comes out to see Jesus because of the demons. The city comes out to see Jesus because of the demons. If there hadn't been for the demons, there wouldn't have been a miracle. And if there hadn't been a miracle, there wouldn't have been a revival. The city comes out to see 
Jesus because of the demons. You're up under attack for a reason. You are up under attack for a reason. Jesus went through a storm to get to this man. This man is significant. One guy, one hairy, stinky, smelly, gnarled up, demoniac guy. And Jesus went through a storm to get to this guy. In fact, he says, let us pass over to the other side. So that's why he got on the boat in the first place, to reach the other side. Jesus said, let us expand the territory. And whenever you get ready to expand your territory, expect a demon to show up somewhere. As long as you stay over there and this stays over here, everything will be all right. But the moment you try to break away from where you came from and take over new territory, that's when all hell breaks loose in your life. He's, he's fighting about territory. I cannot tell you, it's embarrassing how long I taught and preached this text and didn't see the point. I didn't see the point for the pain. I saw the pain, I didn't see the point. The pain, the pain of this man that could not be contained, the pain of this man that couldn't be stopped, the pain of this man that, that, that had no life and had no future, that hated himself and cut himself in the tombs, the pain of this man, the self annihilation of this man, his, his tendency to attack his own future and prosperity. I couldn't see anything but his pain. And because of the pain, I didn't see the point. Because you know, when pain gets strong, you can't think. You can't reason. When pain gets strong, you can't figure things out. Sometimes we are so engrossed with the pain that we don't get the point. You can have pain so bad it makes your blood pressure go up. You can have pain so bad that you lose your appetite. You can have pain so bad that you stop eating and you stop talking and you stop believing and you stop smiling and you don't have your personality because your pain is stopping you from being who you are. If you take a minute and look at your life, every time you're about to step into new territory, all hell breaks loose and sends a storm to stop you from getting there. And the storm doesn't seem connected to your goal, but it is a strategic attack. And so, in fact, I'll go deeper than that. I would go far enough to say that the enemy knew who you were gonna be before you got here. And he did some things early in the game, sometimes 20, 30, 40 years before you reach the destination to try to mess you up so that you wouldn't be prepared to be who God called you to be. The storm always occurs before you get the territory to stop you from getting there in the first place. I bet you some people in here almost died in the crib. I bet you some people that almost died in the first couple of years of your life. I guarantee you some people that were abused and molested and ostracized early in life before anybody got a chance to see who you were going to be. The storm started before the boat landed. If Jesus hadn't have rebuked the storm, he would have never made it to Gadarenes. And then I, I didn't recognize that Gadarenes was inhabited by Gentiles. I didn't reckon, why didn't I know, why didn't I have the sense to know that in that era, no traditional Orthodox Jew would be raising pigs?
Now when I hear Jesus, let us pass over to the other side, I'm not sure whether he's talking about geography. or nationality. He was crossing more than regions. He was crossing cultures. And anytime you start crossing cultures, all hell will break out because the one thing the devil hates is for all types and cultures to bow down and call him Lord. <laughs>